printing. We're going to do 3D printing projects. Uh, so today I'm going to go over something a little different and do something a little different style stuff. Uh, I'm actually going to go over how I actually attach some of my materials together and some of my prints together. Uh, I'm going to try to do Thursday videos. Uh, we'll see how well long that lasts. But if you ever see one that goes up on Thursday, it's going to be more of a, um, like, how I do this. It's kind of more of a how-to video, more than, you know, how I do the overall print, how I print it out, and how it comes out and kind of the finished look of it. So, uh, the, this print I'm going to go over is actually how I join all my parts together. So most of the parts, this will be a, a helmet that I'm working on in the future. It'll be an Iron Man Mark III helmet, I believe. Um, and uh, I'll have to join all the pieces together. So, currently a lot of people will currently use like epoxy or some kind of two-part kind of gel things, but I actually, what I'll use is actually a 3D printing pen. I actually use a 3D printing pen to actually weld all the joints together, uh, so I'm kind of going to go over that and how I do it. So, I'm actually be switching over to the helmet cam. Now, hey, so I picked up this 3D printing pen. It is, sorry, you guys are going to want to ride, the Crafty 3D printing pen. Hopefully that's in frame. Um, and the reason I'm doing it, uh, showing you guys up in uh, a forehead cam versus normal is just so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing easier. I don't have to like, hold it up at an awkward angle with the camera. I can actually do it properly. And hopefully you guys can kind of follow along how I do it. So the first thing you do with this pen is you actually have to preheat it. So it starts off at low temperature, you know, usually around like 170 or so. And then you'll load a little bit of filament. I wouldn't load a whole lot in uh, because it's just going to make it harder to actually pull around since you only have, you know, whatever you put in there plus whatever extra you have. So you put in this slot and then you'll... Alright, so the camera died there. That's cool. So hopefully it's all in frame and not completely crazy. Um, so you'll see that there you, you push the filament on the end there and you'll hit the just forward button on the side of the pen. And filament should start coming out the end now. Hey, that worked. All right, and you can see it's just a big gloop end. And so the the spot welds actually come out really, really easy. So to be kind of really careful with it. All right, well, uh, unfortunately, at this point in the video, I realized that all the video kind of had a problem with it, and that like, part of what I was welding on was just not in the frame. Uh, so I kind of cut it together and spliced it together uh, to try to give you guys some kind of coherent video. So right now, I'm actually just going to talk over what I was doing and explain it to you this way. So uh, hopefully it lines up pretty well and isn't really any huge huge problems. Alright, so the first thing I did here is actually put the little spot welds down on each of the seams. The reason why I do that is so that I actually still I break off the spot welds if there's a problem or if the parts aren't quite lined up. So right there I just put in the, the left spot weld and I'm checking the back to make sure that's actually all smooth in the way I want it to be set up. And then I'm going to actually put in the right spot weld uh, so that it'll be held in place and be more rigid. So once that's done, uh, I'm just going to do one last kind of final check on the whole unit. And, you know, right before I get started actually putting on the final bead of weld down the middle of it, I'll check it and make sure it's all fits properly and looks okay. Now the final bead's going down. Uh, you know, I'll do something a little, 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 little stronger overall. I won't do as kind of a thick one. I'll do a kind of a thinner... Uh, welds that will actually allow me to uh, just so I can't feel as easily in my helmet when I'm actually wearing the unit and it'll actually just be overall a little stronger since like I'll actually go down slower melt all the plastic on each side of the of the seam and actually weld it together Welding just takes a lot of time. But it's overall faster than actually having to sit there and epoxy it, hold it in place, and hopefully it stays there for 24 hours. You only have to hold it there for a few minutes. All right, so now that I got all three of the seams, uh, I'm not actually going to 
do a complete weld on the entire thing. Uh, that just makes sure uh, ensures it so that if there is a seam problem later on in the in the uh, you know welding process, it's not going to actually get in the way. So right now I'm actually attaching in the, the lower side piece in there. I'm kind of hustling through this video just so that you guys don't have to sit there and just stare at nothing at all. Um, what I actually started doing is always I start with the two spot welds on each of the joints. Um, that was the first one on the top and made sure how well the alignment actually sits there. And then I'll go back inside, I believe, and actually hit the uh, second spot weld. All right, so then now I'm actually going through and I'm actually putting on the top part. Uh, that'll, you know, check the alignment again, put down spot welds on two on each of the seams uh, to ensure that it actually, you know, lines up properly and sits in place. One of the big keys about actually welding with 3D printing pen is that you want to kind of, you'll make kind of a little puddle is the best way I can describe it. Uh, I'm going to try to use normal welding terminology because it's 3D printing welding is the same thing as kind of uh, metal welding except the material and the medium that you're using. So with this one, uh, you actually kind of want to like start going there, go left and right and kind of just push this puddle uh, back and forth. Uh, especially that you're adding in there. Uh, this will actually make it so the seam is fine and uh, is fully joined together. Uh, right now I had one problem with the seaming on the inside of the helmet. It was kind of a hard and weird angle to get to, so I actually seamed uh, two spot welds on the outside of the helmet. Then I'm going back in the inside and actually seaming in the inside of the helmet. This allows me so that I can actually go back out and cut the outside uh, spot welds off with either a pair of cutters uh, that come with almost every 3D printer or, you know, it just allows, uh, allows it to be more flexible so that the, the top of it's going to be smoother when I actually go back and do kind of the final finishing touches to the whole unit. So now I'm attaching on the left side ear piece. Um, you know, lower the lower half side on the left side. So it is spot welds, two spot welds on the outside, and then go back on the inside. Do two more spot welds on the inside, and basically, if you can see a pattern, there there is just every every single scene that you do, you may want to make sure you do two spot welds uh, minimum, just to make sure that the unit will actually stay together. So now I'm putting on the top, uh, the front of the left left side of the helmet. Uh, doing the two joints again. Uh, I'm unfortunately having to do them on the outside because of the angles that has to sit at. When I'm holding it down there, I just can't hold it at the correct angle. But you can see here, I slowed down the video to so actually see me going at it with the printing pen, um, kind of hitting over the two spot welds that I chose to do, which were kind of close together. Uh, but that was just based on, you know, proximity and how easy it was to actually get into those angles. Because the other part about it, you, you, you can just see there was the fact that whenever you actually weld something, you actually have to hold it together for a, a little little period of time, a couple seconds generally, or the the heat of plastic hasn't cooled down uh, fast enough and it'll actually just snap apart or, or kind of pull apart. And, you know, obviously your joints won't be welded together. So, as you can see here, every single joint I did two spot welds you know, for strength, and so it's not just going to fall apart immediately after I start moving it around a little bit. It'll actually hold up for a little while until I can actually get the full weld in there. Currently I'm doing a final check before I do uh, full welding on the entire unit. You know, because I don't want to actually find out that, oh crap, one of the joints seemed like it was perfect, but you know, at the end it was moved slightly or just a little bit and just caused huge problems way down the road. So now I'm going to start welding on the entire unit and it'll take me a good little bit. Um, just again, you know, make sure that whenever you're welding you actually get, uh, you're actually heating up both sides of the seam and putting down new material. This new material will bind the two uh, sides together and when you heat it up, it'll attach to that new binding middle section. And it's just basically just a back and forth motion throughout this whole thing. Just, just left, right, and just slowly move up and up as you put down more material. You'll kind of see that you're 
pushing a lot of material down and you kind of move a little faster. But, and if you're just like barely scraping by where you're adding just like the tiniest bit, a little, tiniest little stream of material, you're going too slow. Um, doing this right will make sure that you have a robust enough seam on the inside of it, not just the easiest to break, littlest bit of uh, filament in there. Because it's not unlike normal welding, which will actually heat up more of the joint. You're just heating up the, the face of it and adding that uh, ABS material, in this case, uh, between the seams. Uh, 3 printing welding actually works for all kinds of materials. I've used it on PETG, ABS, uh, PLA. It works. It works fantastic. I've used it on uh, all of the helmets that I've done, or any kind of surface that has an interior surface to it. So, like the Captain Marvel helmet that's on this channel, the Thanos helmet that's on this channel. Uh, I know of both those I did uh, seam work with, and the Spider-Man helmet I did seam work with. But other than that, I kind of use a lot more epoxy on on the rest of them. Mm -hmm. It just you know, the three printing fan is just a lot easier to use and just uh, doesn't give you as much uh, as hard of a time. Yep, right now I'm just going through this in inside of it, just putting on what would be the right side of the helmet, uh, just attaching that together and making sure it actually holds in place. Uh, full welds are, are very critical and the, the, the more material you put on the inside of it, the stronger the weld's going to be. Especially the farther up and down a, on the parts you are, the stronger the weld will be. Um, but when I got to this point right here, uh, it was kind of actually hard to get that back and forth motion. So what I ended up doing was actually filling in with a lot more plastic, uh, slower, and just spit, took my time and just built it up over, over time. That actually allowed me to... Uh, weld in and fill in the seam that was there. Uh, since it was already kind of in a little corner, no amount of plastic was going to be there. Was actually gonna, uh, I was going to feel in my head. So, just made that one little corner nice and strong. Then now the last little bit here is just seaming up the left side of the helmet. So it's all finalized and finished up. Again, one of the, it's just critical to make sure you're going at the right pace. You know, you're going f fast enough where you're getting material pulled out there and putting it on, on the two sides and heating up each side, but not going too slow where you're melting everything and it's just kind of like blobbing or, you know, seeping down in the seam because that's not going to actually give a really good weld or a really solid weld. Right here is some great camera work. Man, just gotta, next time, angle the camera a little farther down. Or wear a chest rig. So you can see I'm finishing up this, this whole thing. Uh, to give an idea on time on how long it took, to do this entire helmet, it took me about 40 minutes to do from start to finish. Uh, but the moment it was done, the moment it, it was the moment it was ready for uh, kind of a filler filler work. You can do a lot of the basic filling with a 3D printing pen if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, personally, I don't really recommend it. It's just harder to use, kind of gives you more problems than it's really worth. All right, so right now I'm just continually finishing up the the welds on the helmet. Uh, again, this just takes a lot of time, but it's faster than a two-part epoxy having to sit there and have to either hold something or jig something together so that it actually holds it in place. Especially these complex uh, curve helmets or just kind of anything that's not a straight flat surface, it's really difficult to actually be able to jig something up into place. So right now I'm just welding on the inside of the right side on the top section of it. I already did the bottom um, and I did a little bit of the top of it so it actually hold together as I'm flipping it over and working on the other side. 
But again, just kind of trying to spread out the weld. So if I find a problem with the helmet, and I can look around and see see it by doing like little chunks here, little chunks there, and it'll be easier to take off the weld or try to fix it um, when there's less weld material there. One of the problems you'll see up here coming up here in the future um, is that there was a kind of a hole in the side of I believe it was the right side. You can kind of see it right there in the bottom left hand of your screen. Uh, what I had to do for that was I actually had to kind of start, it was a little D shape, so I actually kind of used as much as I could of the corners to come in on the actual hole there and just kind of slowly fill it in corner by corner, side by side, until I could actually get a full, uh, you know, continuous weld across the whole thing. Um, and the reason why I did that was so uh, when I actually, you know, compounded uh, Bondo or filler or anything else I was actually putting in there, uh, you would actually have a backstop to it and not just like easily just slide through or not have to come back in with cutters, cut up the inside, put more Bondo on the inside. It was, it, it let me be able to, you know, have, have, a, have a solid surface. Now we're just doing more welding, and now this is the section I was talking about how it's going to be a, a kind of a pain to do. So you can see that I kind of start off on the top right corner, the top on the top edge, and or, yeah, the top right corner. I was right. I questioned myself there for a minute I'm during editing as I'm watching this video over again. So the top right corner and kind of go back and forth, and uh, you know whatever seems that I can kind of get together and move as far forward without having a whole lot of sag in the uh, the extruded filament that I'm printing or that I'm welding with come out. Uh, the biggest problem with this is that you can actually over weld in one section which will cause all of the filament that you're extruding to heat up and sag inside of the joint. Um, it, it just makes a weaker joint overall um, and just kind of just lets it have more flexibility in there. Now you can see that, um, you know, when the joint's there, it's mostly already packed through and whenever I actually go down to tap down some material in there, it'll actually stay in that hole and not just um, go in there. Man, I went to town with that weird finger motion there, didn't I? All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do with it was actually repair off this one corner of the print. Uh, it had a little problems when I actually printed off, and one of the things you can do with the printing pen, 3D printing pen is actually save these parts. And so I can actually go back through and I can actually weld up all those joints, get them as strong as the rest of the helmet would be, and then when I'm going through and I'm bondoing all the joints or using whatever kind of filler I want to use, um, I can fill in those joints on the outside of it as well. All right, and that should be it for... Uh, welding on the inside of it, so now I should actually turn back over to uh, normal Josh. Alright, so now that I got that all done, now I'll have this helmet, which will fit on my head. I'll tuck it in my ears a little bit. And it's all nice and strong and ready to go. So, the jaw piece is upstairs. The jaw piece, sorry, I was talking in the, with the helmet in front of my face. Like an idiot. The jaw piece I'll actually put on last. Um, I actually don't weld it onto the unit. I'll actually, what I'll do is I'll actually epoxy on magnets onto the bottom of it so it's removable. And when I uh, actually epoxy on uh, magnets onto the actual faceplate itself, so it's also removable. Alright, so that being said, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please comment down below kind of what kind of videos you guys like to see. If you guys want to see more of these, you know, how I kind of make prints and how I do stuff. Or if you want to continue to see a lot more of the, you know, all the other uh, prints I make and all the other kind of things I do. So, yeah, just comment down below. Please like this video and uh, subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much and have a good one.